In this video, we are doing number two from the 2024 AP Pre-Calculus exam. Let's take a look at it. So initial day of sales, T equals zero for a new video game. There were 40,000 units of the game sold. 91 days later, which is T equals 91, there were 76,000 units of the game sold. The number of units uh, can be modeled by G of T, which is A plus B natural log of T plus one. G of T is the number of units sold in thousands on day T since the initial day of sales. All right, first up, we want to use a given uh, data to write two equations that can be used to find the values of A and B. So uh, first, what you want to do is like read through and pull off ordered pairs. So you got 0, 40 is one of our ordered pairs. Um, and remember, the units are thousands of units. So it's like 40 and then thousands of units. And then we also have 91, 76,000. So that'll be 91 comma 76. We need to write um, two equations. So uh, I'm not 100% sure on AP Pre-Calc yet, if you're allowed to do this. I know on AP Calculus, you definitely are. Uh, we could just write G of 40, uh, G of 0 is 40, and G of 91 is 76. That is a system of equations because G of T is defined for us, but I'm not sure. So I went ahead and I actually like subbed in um, and said A plus B natural log of 0 plus 1 would equal 40. And then it, what's interesting is the natural log of 1 is 0, so that's basically just telling you A is 40. Um, but I'm going to carry on anyway. Uh, a plus B natural log of 91 plus 1 is equal to 76. So uh, that's it. That's two equations that can be used. So I think we're good. Uh, for part two, we need to actually find the values of A and B as decimals. I just use solve on the calculator. So here's, here's what that looked like. I defined G of T, and then I just had it solve the system of equations. It gives me my values. So I would write those down. Uh, three decimal places for B. A is actually exactly 40. So no rounding necessary. Let's take a look at um, the next part, part B. So use the given data to find the average rate of change of the number of units of video games sold um, in thousands per day, zero to 91. Express your answer as a decimal, kind of interesting. Show the computations that lead to your answer. So we're gonna find uh, average rate of change. Average rate of change is just algebra and slope. So using those ordered pairs that we had, um, we're looking at like G, I used G here, um, which is definitely true. I don't know if we're supposed to just do, uh, you know, our 76 minus 40 over 91 minus zero. That's also a calculation. Uh, the values of G at those values are exactly what I have. So I think that we're okay there, but maybe 76 minus 40 over 91 is better. We need a decimal. So just, you know, grab a calculator and do that. And then I don't think we need units because they're in the problem, but I put units anyway, thousands per day is what we're selling here. Um, the next part, use the average rate of change found in one to estimate the number of units of the video game sold on day 50, show the work that leads to your answer. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to write a secant line. So secant lines are a big deal. They're just uh, the algebra one lines that you learn, they go through two points. So I'm saying uh, y minus 40 is our slope and then the quantity t minus zero because on day zero they sold 40. You also could use the ordered pair. So you could have written y minus 76 equals 0.396 quantity t minus 91. Um, either one will give exactly the same result so it doesn't make a difference which one you choose. Uh, now what we need to do is figure out what's happening at 50. So at t equals 50, um, I would say that we would get 40 plus 0.396 and then we're plugging in 50. Uh, just use a calculator on that. So I use both of the secant lines just to show you that they're giving the same result. Um, so this is approximately 59.780. I noticed in all the practice things, so over the years, we'll all get better at this, but on the practice things, they didn't leave things like this. They just kind of rounded them. So I then wrote a sentence. I mean, I think I'm covering all the bases here, but I said about 60,000 units sold on day 50. Because again, I don't want to lose points when I don't need to, especially if I'm writing things that are technically correct. So like, why not go with it? Um, for part three, we're going to let um, A of T represent the estimate of the number of units of the video game sold in thousands using the average rate of change found in one. For A50 found in two, it can be shown that A of 50 or A sub 50 is less than G of 50. Okay, explain why in general, A T is less than G of T for all t between 0 and 91. I had a lot of trouble reading it. Let's see about doing it. Um, I just graphed this scenario just to see what was going on. And here we can see, so our model is concave down everywhere, but in particular, it's concave down between 0 and 91. Um, and so because of that, a secant line is below 
the model, right? Because a uh, secant line is always below the curve when the curve is concave down. So I'm just going to basically write that up and say that is why plugging into the secant line will always give us an underestimate of the model's value. The model is the concave down function. So uh, it's going to look something like this. Since g of t is concave down between 0 and 91, I don't know why I did that since. I should have just declared it. G of t is concave down. I don't know why I wrote since. Um, the value of a sub t uh, is found using the secant line between 0 and 91. So I'm just explaining g of t is concave down. Where does a sub t come from? It comes from plugging into the secant line on that interval. Um, and then we would just say, you know, uh, on 0 to 91, the secant line is below the graph. Therefore, a sub t is less than g of t for all t between 0 and 91. You want to reference using the secant line, reference concavity, um, and then, you know, make a statement. I think that's, I think that's like a three-step process that's going to get us all the points there. Let's look at the next part, which um, I'll be honest with you, I've struggled to write up a solution to this. I'm not entirely sure what they're going for here. Uh, the makers of the video game reported that daily sales of the video game decreased each day after t equals 91. Okay, so they're telling you that. The function is no longer increasing, it is now decreasing. Explain why the error in the model g increases after t equals 91. So I'm like, not 100% sure what they're going for, other than uh, I, I showed our graph again. I know I included the secant line, just ignore the secant line, just look at the graph, right? The graph is always increasing. So uh, I've written down, the model used for g of t is an increasing function. If the daily sales begin to decrease, then the error is just going to become larger, right? Because the model is increasing, the sales are decreasing, the difference between the model and reality is just going to keep deviating. I'm not sure how many of these words I should have written, but I didn't write those clearly, I'm just saying them. Um, and then I got one more thing that I felt like I should probably say, I guess. Uh, the model g of t should just not be used for t greater than 91 in this case, um, because we are told this thing is always decreasing. Not 100% sure we're going to get all the points on that, um, but when the scoring guidelines come out, we'll all look at it, we'll all get better. So I hope this was helpful, and good luck.